everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, one of the reasons is that I'm a new entrepreneur. Uh, this is my three month anniversary on this day of quitting my job. <laughs> So uh, that being said, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a concept called acknowledgement, specifically the power of acknowledgement. And the way that I want to do that is share with you uh, the story of what it means to me on a personal level. And I want to share how acknowledgement has helped me develop uh, the startup that I'm currently working on. And then I want to share with you sort of my vision of the web, which is very much around things like personal health care, which we just heard about, but how I believe that through acknowledging people, uh, through technology, we can make such a huge difference, specifically as women entrepreneurs. So I like to talk and start by saying uh, a little bit about who I am. Uh, I am from California, but my parents are from the South, the deep South, or as some people say, the dirty South. Uh, my dad is from Magnolia, Mississippi. My mom is from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I tend to think of myself as a Southern girl, even though I was born in Sacramento. <laughs> Um, and being from the South is really important to me and really important to my family. Um, that includes everything from like the bacon grease jar to sitting on the porch to um, knowing who your neighbors are. That's just been part of my general identity. And really a big part of that is my mother. My mother is like the complete charmer of all people. Um, what they say about Southern women, they rule with an iron fist and a velvet glove. Uh, speaks really true to my mom. She is one of the hardest people I know, but she wraps it in honey. She is so <laughs> charming. And one of the things that she does really well, and one of her life lessons to me when I was a child, was always acknowledge people, really understand what their story is, and it doesn't matter who they are, simply saying hello, and how are they doing, and really knowing what's going on in people's lives is powerful. Now, when I was little, I found this very annoying um, <laughs> because I'm an, I was an introvert, which is shocking, um, and I was really shy. And plus, basic things that my mother did, which was like going to the grocery store, took forever because she said hello uh, to everyone. She knew everyone's business. And I just found it incredibly annoying. Um, but one of the beautiful things about being a woman, as we all know, is that you end up becoming like your mother. Um, <laughs> and so one of the things that I found out in my life is that I really, really try really hard to get to know people and to know people's stories, which leads me to college. Um, I had the opportunity to travel um, three of the five years I was in university and got two degrees. One of those was in cultural studies and anthropology. And I was really interested in understanding the story of people, the psychology of people, and what makes people tick. And from university, I went into marketing, specifically brand management. And I worked at some of the billion dollar brands in the world. Um, and I think I was a good marketer. I can claim that I was a good marketer. Um, and I never thought that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Or if I was going to be one, it was going to be like a consultant. It wasn't going to be um, scale. So this is an interesting journey for me, and I want to share why, how I ended up in this place. So I was sitting, working on a beauty brand. And three facts kind of came to me over a summer, and I'm going to share them with you and how those three facts have made uh, my company, which is House of Miko. The first one was this statistic. Black women spend three times more on beauty than any other segment of the population. That's crazy. <laughs> three times more. So I absorbed that. I thought that was an interesting factoid in my toolkit, but I didn't really do anything with it. Then a month later, this other fact came. And it was black women are the most unsatisfied with their beauty products. They feel the most ignored by the media, and they feel the most ignored by brands. And I thought, that's interesting, because usually when you spend money, and you're in the segment that spends the most, you're like VIP. <laughs> so this is an example where you're not VIP. And I thought, hmm, there's something wrong with this. How could my job in this role fix that? But it was this third nugget, this third uh, piece of information, which is that actually black women and Hispanic women travel the most for their beauty products, like drive the most miles to get their beauty products, because certain beauty products that they needed were not necessarily found on shelf at Targets and at Walmart. 
So they were going to beauty supply stores, which were often far removed. So those three facts together over the summer, I think, are insights. And somewhere in there, I was like, there's got to be a way that technology can solve that. I don't know if I'm the person, but I feel like I can stumble between those three facts. There's something there. I feel comfortable. So this was about a year ago. And I thought, why don't I just try something like social media? Let's, let's just talk to people and see if people engage with this sort of idea online. So we started with Facebook and Twitter and kind of created this dummy company about what we were going to do, what we're going to do. Um, and pretty quickly, we had 90,000 women who had signed up. <laughs> and here I am working a full-time job, and I'm like, wait a second, seems like something hot is going on over here. <laughs> um, I probably should do something about that. So I left my job two months ago, or three months ago now, um, and had my classmate uh, join me. And we were like, what are we going to do? We have this audience of people who really want something. Um, we seem to have found this market. Now we need a product. So, um, <laughs> duh. Um, so we went and we come up with these concepts, and we thought we could do something with a mobile device. Let's send out this. Let's send out a survey. And obviously, starting a company is hard. Um, it's really hard when you try. Um, and so on this particular day when we were getting these surveys results, it was a, one of those bad days. It was like, you, it's a roller coaster ride being an entrepreneur. So it was like a day that I just thought everything in the world sucked. Like I thought I sucked, this, why did I quit my job? This, this is all just not working. And this survey came through and it didn't look, it didn't rank well. There was something about like I do not use um, mobile, I, don't, I do not use a mobile device. I hate when people uh, try to send me messages uh, on my phone. And it was just like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff. And I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not going to read this today. So I read the letter the next day. And it was a pretty profound that like I should continue reading. She had said, I personally do not have a mobile device. I'm 77 years old. I don't really get this. But your company and what you're trying to do is important to me. So I asked all of the grandkids and their grandchildren, and I collected 23 responses for you. And she put all of the responses about what we should do in that email. But she closed it and she said, thank you for acknowledging me. As a woman, thank you for making me feel beautiful. And I thought that was pretty profound. I mean, we don't even have a product. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and she said this word acknowledge, and acknowledge is a pretty strong word. It's a pretty formal word, so I wanted to know what does acknowledge you know, actually mean? Not the definition, but like how do other people use it? Because it's not a word that I throw out there. Um, so I looked up the etymology of the word, and it was actually used first in the 15th century. And it's when a man who was a, a noble man acknowledged that he had a child of illegitimacy. So let me say that again. It's when a man <laughs> of noble rank acknowledged that he had and recognized that he had a child. And what that meant was that that child got the rights of all of his other children. And there's a couple things in that definition that I really like. One, it's recognition. The second one is around acceptance. And the third is around validation. And I think those are three powerful themes that have sort of woven itself within what we're trying to do at House of Miko. So just a quick uh, background on what the idea was and what the idea is. It's the idea that I should be able to provide a beauty recommendation to you based on what you look like. Because having your friends tell you what products you use is sort of irrelevant. What is relevant, if you have straight hair, is that you want to have a recommendation from someone with straight hair. So how can we use sort of beauty genomes to help you be the most perfect you? So that was the general concept. That's what we're currently working on. Um, and it's the view of having a personalized experience for people based on attributes that really matter. So that's how acknowledgment sort of has played a role in my personal life and how acknowledgment has played a role in helping me start um, this company. But there's a couple of things that I sort of wish and want um, from the web, and I think that we're getting there. And that's why I loved hearing the story of 23andMe. 
because I think that a personalized view, being able to be personal online is so powerful. Really connecting to people as individuals, I think is the power of the web. And I think women entrepreneurs, specifically in tech, have the power to really understand and acknowledge people online and acknowledge people through technology. Now all this is kind of soft, and I'm used to this being in marketing. Um, it's sort of like, oh, that's soft, we can add that in later. It's not like super um, quantitative. But there are some things that we know. We know that when you send a personalized email on someone's birthday versus on an, any other day, that she opens it three times more. We know that even if you give a bad recommendation, but she believes that you're talking to her, we know that she spends twice as much. There was a survey, and those two were online examples, but there's even an offline example. So a couple of years ago, they did this study called, um, well, I'm not sure what it was called actually, but it was a restaurant study, and it was this idea of leaving mints and how people would tip. And so there was three segments. One, they gave you a mint like you, they typically give you a mint. In segment two, the waiter would specifically hand you the mint and say, here's your mint, thank you for dining with us. And then in segment three, they would give you the mint and come back and act as if they had forgotten the mint. It was like, I want to make sure you got the mint. Segment three tipped 23% higher than the rest of the segments. And it speaks to human psychology where people want to feel like there's a personal interaction. People want to feel and be recognized um, in our day-to-day -day lives. And as technology takes over our day-to-day -day interactions, how can we do that online? One of my favorite sites right now is Pinterest. Are you guys familiar? I love Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is a visual bookmarking site. It's one of the fastest growing um, startups right now. And it's interesting, Robert Scoble, who, uh, who covers a lot of things in tech, said something. Um, it wasn't on my radar because I don't think about women-oriented tech sites. And it's not judging him and what he said. I mean, it's completely valid. I don't really track World of Warcraft either. Um, <laughs> so it's not a knock of him, but it was interesting that this is one of the fastest growing startups and no one was covering it. No one was paying attention. Um, and basically, it's a bookmarking tool. Um, and it's so simple, and yet it's so addictive. I mean, in less than a year, it was uh, on the cover of Wall Street Journal and on uh, NBC, and they have pinner groups all around the world. And there's one thing that I think they do really, really well on Pinterest. And it kind of plays into this concept of recognizing and acknowledging contributions. So if you, if you contribute something to the community, let's say I pin a picture of my hair, someone can repin it. That's pretty simple. Uh, that's not particularly novel. Um, but I get a notification that someone has repented. And I know her name. And it'll say something like, Mary repented. And they actually said, when I spoke to some of the people who work there, um, that that acknowledgment factor is what drove activity. Because people want to feel validated in the things that they do. They want to feel like their contributions matter. And that's so incredibly minor. Like, let's think about that. You repinned a picture. Is that really like the most thrilling thing of my day? And yet, for some people, it is. I contributed to a community. I know that my actions mattered. And the same thing happens with Twitter. Someone retweets you, and that means something. You want to be acknowledged. You want to feel like the things that you do matter, and that you have um, a space in this world. So I think that that is the vision of the next vision of the web, or my personal vision of the web, is how can we make people feel like they're individuals and that they really speak to them. And I think there's a couple of ways, and I'll leave just a couple of thoughts that um, I've been thinking about. Um, one, I think it's things that include design. Are things designed for women? If women really are spending 80% of the dollars, why are most sites still blue and gray? <laughs> and then when men try to uh, address for women, um, it's usually hot pink. <laughs> and so it's really not recognizing who I am and really trying to know what I stand for. You are doing the stereotype. 
you're doing what's easy and not really speaking to what it means for me. Um, there is a site or a mobile device called Hipster. I'm not a hipster. Um, and it's definitely targeted to people who are hipsters. Um, and there's a picture, a surprise picture of a hipster that pops up when you open this app. Now, if I was a hipster, I find it really cool. My friends who are hipsters love this app. Because it's this moment of discovery, it's not supposed to be there, it's these funny jokes, et cetera. It really connects with the target audience. It has a personality. I think that brands and brand companies have known this for a long time. I've worked on some things like ranch dressing. I've worked on things like barbecue sauce and dog food. <laughs> All of those brands, as a brand manager, has a brand personality. I think that there's an opportunity to take that same brand personality and really understand what you stand for. And that's the experience that your site delivers. I think that is the tone of how you speak to your users. I think it's really about connecting with people. It's the colors uh, that you use. It's how you uh, speak to someone. I'll end on this. Um, on Thanksgiving Day, or I think it was Black Friday, um, I got a, like 100 emails about all the crazy sales. 80% off here, 40% off there. And I follow a lot of different startups. Um, and so I got emails from companies I know aren't even selling anything. They just wanted to see if I'm going to open the email so that they can prove it to their investor or prove it to whoever that they have traction. Look, we have 80% of people who've opened this email. It's a dummy site. It doesn't even work. There was one site um, that sent a thank you Thanksgiving note. And I opened it. I don't really get that much mail these days. I went to the post office for the first time in like years uh, last month. Um, and I thought it was profound. It was what every employee at this startup was thankful for. And it showed pictures of what they were thankful for. And it was people that had influenced them in their lives. And I read every single line of that email. And I started clicking on these pictures of people I don't even know. <laughs> uh, and I became really profound by that. Um, but it was because there was a story. There were stories of people behind this startup. And just like in the Mint case, because they have reached out to me and told me their story, they have reached out to me and engaged in a conversation, I'm more aware of who they are as an organization. I feel obligated to continue my conversation with them. And so as we think about whatever vertical we are in, the question is, how do you acknowledge people? How do you acknowledge the people in your life on a personal level? And if you're working on a technology play, how are you acknowledging your users? As much as technology um, can be impersonal, there are so many different ways to make it personalized and relevant and really to acknowledge your users. Thank you.